Good morning. Time to begin our service this morning. We're very glad to have all of y'all here with us this morning. Uh, it's hot out, but it's a beautiful day to worship. A beautiful day to be here to have fellowship. Uh, if you would, join me in a word of prayer, and we'll get our services started this morning. Father, help me come to you in prayer this morning, and we're thankful that you chose to give us another day in this world. We're thankful that you chose to give us another opportunity to worship you and to have fellowship and just to be comforted by your word. Father, we have those in our congregation that can't be with us this morning due to various illnesses. We miss them. We love them. We wish that they could be back with us, and I know that they'd like to be here as well. We pray that you heal them and that you just touch them. Father, as we sing to you this morning and as we pray to you and worship you, it's our prayer that not only will we be uplifted, but more importantly, that it's all for your honor, for your glory. Pray now, Father, that you guide us in this service and all that we do. Help us, Father, to be participants. Help us to go away from here this morning a better Christian, a better person. Let's pray in Christ's name. Amen. Our first song this morning will be number 537 if you're using your books. 537. Here we are but straying pilgrims here. Our path is often dim. But to cheer us on our journey still we sing this wayside hymn. Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions rise. Soon will be our home. Five hundred eighty six is our next song. <clears throat> Five hundred eighty six. I believe after this song we'll have another prayer. Five hundred eighty six. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. Say Life. 
Father, we feel it's a privilege to be here today. We know there's people in this world that don't have this privilege. If they do worship you, it has to be in secret. We're just thankful for the country that we live, that we're allowed these privileges. We're thankful for the men and women that serve this country, that protects our freedoms and the things that we do. And we just ask you to be with them and, and protect them and as they serve this country. We have many of this congregation are, are sick, many with COVID, and uh, we just ask you to be with them and help them to recover from this illness. We know that it's in this country. We just ask you to be with the doctors and nurses and fire department, police department, and all those that around us on a daily basis, protect them from this illness, if they could continue to help those that do have it. We ask to be with our young people at this time as they getting ready to go back to school soon. We know that they face the things that I wasn't exposed to when I was their age. And we pray that they let their light shine and uh, as they go around to others and they can see what life is supposed to be like and we're just thankful for them. We're thankful for Larry as he preaches the gospel here and uh, all the things that he does. We're just happy to have him and Jer Jeremy also, he worked with our young people. Uh, we're just thankful for them and the work that they do and as they try to serve you in a way that's well pleasing to you. We ask you to be with Easton as he works here this summer. And we're just thankful for him as he's chose in his profession to be a youth minister. And uh, we're just thankful for him and the example he has to us since he's been a young child, and uh, we're just very thankful for people like this that want to serve in, in this capacity. Be with us as we go through this service. Help us to live the life that's well pleasing to you, and uh, as we're around others, be with those who we support in the foreign mission fields. Or, uh, even local mission fields or children's homes. And, uh, we're just thankful for those that was able to go to New Mexico children's home and work there and that they had a safe journey there and back and be with all others as they can serve in these children's homes. They try to teach children it's sometimes hard to teach. We're just thankful for those that work with them. Be with Larry now as he brings this lesson to us. And help him to remember and say the things that will make each of us stronger. We think we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This time we're going to start preparing our mind for the Lord's Supper. And to that end, we'll sing number 361, after which we'll have a scripture reading and prayers for that. 361. There was one who was willing to die in my stead that a soul so unworthy might live. And the path to the cross he was willing
Before communion will be Mark chapter 14, beginning in verse 17, if you'd like to follow along. It says, In the evening he came with the twelve. Now as they sat and ate, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you who eats with me will betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and said to him one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said to them, It is one of the twelve who dips with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had never been born. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Did everyone have a chance to get in the emblems as you came in? Anybody need one? There's some in the back that they'll bring it in. Let's pray together. Father, we approach you this hour as reverently and as respectfully and as we know how to attempt in a meager way to show our gratitude for such an incredible gift. In our hearts, we would love to be able to be better at showing our gratitude, but Father, we pray that our lives will show that gratitude for this remarkable gift, the gift of your Son. As we take this bread together, Father, we pray that we will 
remember. Remember from the very miracle of birth and conception to his entire life and what it meant, what it is, and what it is to us now. Help us to remember that now, Father, as we partake together. We pray through Christ's name. Amen. continue. Father, we're grateful to you for teaching us through creation the valued thing of the blood and how that without blood life is not possible. And we learn to cherish and protect that life-giving flow. And Father, we realize that it's no different with our spiritual walk, with our spiritual side of who we are, that this blood is absolutely necessary to continue to live spiritually. We're grateful to you, Father, for the sacrifice of shedding Christ's blood for us, and may we reflect on what it not only has done in the past for us what it presently does, but in the future, what it will be to us always. Be with us now as we remember, as we drink this cup, we pray in Christ's name, amen. Well, most of us like giving things to the people we love and look forward to those things at birthdays and Christmases and so forth. Yet each first day of the week, we're instructed to purpose in our hearts and to lay by in store a gift for the one we love. And so it's a joyful thing we do together. And we won't be taking the collection as has been customary for a long time. But there's a box in the back. There's apps on places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Tithely app. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> anyway, there's ways that you can figure that out to take care of it. But my prayer is this morning that we have purpose in our hearts and that it is a joyous gift. And also, it's a gift of sacrifice. We've had to sacrifice for this pleasure, this privilege to give what we can. Let's pray together. Well, we love you, Father, and we say that sometimes kind of flippantly and kind of lackadaisically, and we really want to show that love we have for you. We pray that we can show that in the very life that you have given us. Not just the quantity of it, Father, but the quality. The way you take care of us. Above all nations. Above all people. And even though, Father, we fall short in even understanding our richness in this, cult, in this our, uh, world, we realize that everything we have comes from you. We give you the credit for it. We give you the ownership of it. And pray that we can only be good stewards of what is yours to begin with. Yet, Father, we've purposed in our hearts to give a portion of that to the eldership here to use as in the work here locally. 
And we pray for wisdom for those men, that they will use it wisely, and a great good will come, and your name will be glorified in our community as well as parts of the earth. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. As a kid, this is one of my more favorite songs to sing. That's uh, way before I was a song leader. So, um, this song and the next song, the invitation song, will be PowerPoint only. The invitation song will be God is Calling the Prodigal. We'll sing the first and last of that. But let's stand and sing. We shall see the King someday. I think the sermon has something to be wanting to go home to heaven. So. Though the way we journey may be often drear, we shall see the King someday. On that blessed morning, clouds will disappear, we shall see the King someday. We shall see the King someday. We will shout and sing someday. faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance <clears throat> and he went out not knowing where he was going by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise for he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I am 
We're so glad to see you this morning. Thank you for being here, especially those of you that are visiting with us. We love having you today. We kind of have a saying around here at uh, Johnson that you're never a visitor at the Johnson Church of Christ. You're just part of the family. So you come back and be part of our family anytime that you have an opportunity to do so. We'd love to have you. Just want to say that I am feeling so much better. I know that I've kind of been dragging and, and uh, since my, I was in the hospital a couple of weeks ago. And, and you've been very concerned about that. And you're, you've offered prayers for me. And, and uh, your prayers have been answered. And I am feeling much better. And, man, I am so glad to, uh, to be able to, to feel a little bit more like myself. I thank you for your love and your concern. And I thank you for your prayers. Whenever I was, uh, had graduated from high school, man, I was so glad because I could get out of the house. The only problem was that mother and daddy said that if I was going to, they were going to pay for school, I was going to have to go to Harding. And it wasn't that I didn't want to go to Harding. I just didn't want to be a preacher. And mother thought if she made me go to Harding, I'd be a preacher. So I, it, I was really so glad whenever I got a uh, track scholarship to Northeast uh, Louisiana State College. It, uh, it's uh, Louisiana Monroe now, and Arkansas has played them a time or two in football. But I didn't have to, mother and daddy didn't have to pay for my school anymore, and so, and I got out of the house, and man, I could not have been happier for a couple of weeks. And then I got to miss it, my mama at home. Now, Northeast is in Monroe, Louisiana, and I lived in Cross City. It was about 65 miles away, so uh, I, I packed up my little satchel and I put my dirty clothes in a, uh, in a pillowcase, and I went out on the road and started hitchhiking home. Now, back a thousand years ago when I was young, you could do that. Can't hitchhike anymore, kids. But I'd hitchhike home, and oh, it was so good to be back home. Mother's cooking, and I didn't realize until I got away how homesick I could be. Now the next year, I wanted to play football, and Northeast was a too big a school, and I had too little talent to play uh, football there. So I transferred to Harding. And, uh, of course, I was a lot further away from home, and by that time, Miss Pat had come on the scene, so I was lovesick instead of homesick. And lovesick trumps homesick any time of the day. So, uh, anyway, you know the rest of that story. You know, one of the mysteries of our animal world and bird world and fish world is how in the world do like some of these geese and ducks and, and salmon and, and eels and animals, how do they know how to go to their home that they've never seen? Sometimes traveling thousands and thousands of miles, no map, no compass, no GPS, and yet year by year they go back to the, the exact place that they're supposed to go. And what about, what about homing pigeons? They have an absolute uncanny sense of direction. They used to think that uh, these homing pigeons navigated by the stars until some scientists took a bunch of homing pigeons and they blindfolded them and took them and then turned them loose and every single one of them unfailingly found their way back home. Isn't that crazy? When Pat and I first got married, uh, my first preaching job was in uh, Hamburg, Arkansas. Made $50 a week. Don't get any ideas, elders. Made $50 a week, uh, lived in a 10 by 50 trailer, 
our uh, our monthly payment on our trailer was $35 a month. But anyway, we had a little dog named Prince. He was a Japanese Spaniel. I've never seen a Japanese Spaniel since. He was a little dog and just the smartest little dog you could ever see, we ever had. And he was so cute. We lived, our trailer park that we lived in was next to a, uh, a, a restaurant. And one day, Prince went missing. And we just knew that somebody that had been there at the restaurant saw a cute little dog and picked him up. Man, our hearts were just broken because we loved, loved, loved little Prince. About two and a half months later, I was, had walked out of the trailer one day and Prince, came running out from underneath the car. He was a mess and we took him to the veterinarian and the vet said, there is no telling how far this little animal has traveled. His little pads on his feet were just worn down. He had gotten loose from whomever had gotten him, maybe hundreds of miles away. And the little animal had made his way back home. Isn't that an amazing story? But did you know, did you know that the Creator has placed the same instinct in us? And when we are true to our God nature, there, there is an internal compass inside our hearts, a longing in our soul, a, a, a deep down in our being <coughs> desire for a home that we have never seen. And, and the wise man Solomon in Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11 tells us, he says, God has set eternity in the hearts of all men. Now I think the optimum phrase here is when we are true to our God nature. Now there are some people that are not homesick for heaven because they have allowed this world to become way more important to them than it should. And they have fallen in love with the world and therefore have lost their desire to go home. But you haven't. You haven't. And it is inside of all mankind. And it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. When in the Garden of Eden there was a, 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 a fellowship a, a relationship between Adam and Eve and God. It, it was this desire to be with God. And, and then, of course, sin came into the garden and Adam and Eve uh, lost that after their sin and they were thrown out of the garden. And ever since, ever since the beings have longed to return to that relationship with God. And we can have it again in heaven. And that's the reason why as a Christian, true to his nature of God, will always have a longing and a homesickness for heaven. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 16, uh, after describing the faith of such great heroes like Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham, it says here in verse 16, they were longing, they were longing for a better country a heavenly one. 
Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Augustine, a writer of the first century, wrote one time, he said, of God, you have created us for thyself, and our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. They were longing. Did you catch that? There it is, the longing of the soul that every one of us has. It's within every human heart, that innate drive to want to go back home to be with God. And all the great men and women that lived in old and all the victories they achieved was in hopes of a desire of having that opportunity. Now, I can no more explain this, then I can explain why the geese fly south every year. But I can describe it for you using uh, Hebrews chapter 11. And I think there are three phrases here that are used in relationship to Abraham that maybe will help us describe a little bit about what this homesickness is and why. In verse 8, we see the phrase called out. What what causes these geese and ducks and swallows, what causes them every year to make this arduous flight uh, south and, and back home? Perhaps it's the changing of the season. Perhaps it's the chill in the air. Perhaps it's the, the, the position of the sun. I, I don't know. But every year something awakens uh, this instinct in these birds and animals and fish. Something calls them to fly south or to go back home. And I think that's what the writer is talking about here when he uses this, this phrase, Abraham was called out. I think we're called out of this world because we're not made to live here. We are not made to live in this sinful world. And God has a better place for us. And, and then there is the, the phrase uh, here used in verse 9 of a stranger in a foreign country. You, you remember the story of the disagreement that Abraham had with his nephew Lot, and they decided to part ways. Abraham had his choice. And he could have well chosen the green pastures and the watered uh, fields, uh, and he could have pitched his tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abraham refused, it says, to settle down or to settle for what this life offers to compromise. Now, Lot made a, a, a financial decision that made sense from a temporal standpoint. It was, it was good water. It was good land. He chose the path of ease, but the result was awful. Awful. Yet Abraham, on the other hand, it says here in Hebrews 10, was a, a traveler, a pilgrim. He was on a journey through this 
this life to somewhere. And he refused to compromise his faith because he knew this world is not permanent. It does not last. In 1 John 2 and verse 15, and then in verse 17, John said, Do not love the world, neither the things that are in the world. For he that loveth the world, the love of the Father is not any. And then verse 17, This world and all its desires, listen, this world and all its desires pass away. But the man who does the will of God lives forever. That's what's drawing us. That's what's drawing us home. As we read in verse 10 here, it says, A city with foundations. Abraham was dissatisfied with this world. Because this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And the angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Abraham was called by the voice of the Almighty. Once he, once he encountered the power of the living God, nothing, nothing else in this world was ever quite the same again. So what does that mean for me and you? Well, very quickly here, I want to look at three more words in Hebrews 11. In verse 13, the word aliens. Aliens. We are aliens. A uh, third century writer, Diogenes, wrote about Christians. He said, they live in their own homeland but as foreigners. They share in everything as citizens but endure everything as aliens. Every foreign country is their homeland, but every homeland is a strange country to them. They spend their time on earth, but their citizenship is in heaven. It will be forever be the lot of a Christian to be a pilgrim, an alien in this old world, because this world is not our home. And then I want to look at the word in verse 13, the word saw. Abraham saw a new country. In Hebrews 11 and 1, it tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things we cannot see. No, we haven't seen heaven. How come we are drawn? How come we are homesick for a place that we have never, ever seen? Some people say seeing is believing. I say believing is seeing. I know that for Paul, it was this desire to go home that helped him to endure the many hardships that he had in his life as a Christian. Homesick or heaven. And then the last word today is found in verse 13 as well, and it is the word faith. How can we be homesick for heaven when we've never been there? I, I know whenever I was young, I, I used to think that the Sermons about death and heaven were, were kind of morbid, you know, because I was young and I was interested in living in the here and now and not in the sweet by and by. 
But as the years have come and gone, I, I no longer am, feel privileged to uh, live in this world, uh, but have a greater desire uh, that when this is over, to, to get to go home and to be with God. Because this world is <coughs> it's temporary. And I think of its impermanence or its unpredictability. I, I go to appreciate what the Bible talks about when it says being homesick for heaven. <coughs> now don't get me wrong, this life is precious and you need to enjoy it the best that you can. But you just don't need to ever trust it. Because it's, well, at, at least not completely. Because it, it will disappoint you. And your time here is coming to an end. So God has put a homing instinct in every one of us. Don't ever let this world drown that great truth out in your life. Because there's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith, we can see it afar. For my Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. What do you say? Let's go to heaven. I'll meet you there. Will you come while together we stand and sing? God is calling the prodigal come without delay. Just a few things to share with you this morning. Uh, these are in the bulletin. I do encourage you to get one. But uh, just a few reminders. Youth, if you're planning on going to Green Valley this year on the session that's considered the Johnson session, starts on the 31st of this month, the online registration closes today. So if you want to go, haven't registered, today is probably the deadline to do so. Another reminder here, if you plan on having or bringing your children to our VBS that's coming up here pretty soon, uh, there's a list in the back. Please sign that list as far as if you plan on attending with your children. This helps out in knowing how much food to prepare, what kind of crafts, and also how many teachers are needed. 
With that being said, there will not be any adult classes this year during the BBS, uh, but there will be singing after the classes for the children and also a skit that you're encouraged to come and be a part of. Brother Doug says it's about time for new teachers. He'll have a new sign-up sheet out in the foyer probably within the next week or so. Uh, if you have an interest in teaching, have any questions regarding curriculum or any suggestions, please see Brother Doug. Uh, he's open to thoughts. Uh, he'll answer your questions. And if you'd like to teach, get in touch with him. Last two announcements are for the seniors. This has been announced once already, but on uh, the 30th of this month, seniors will be going to Lambert's Cafe and the Presley Show. Leave the building at one o'clock, eat around 4.30 in the afternoon, uh, go to the show and be back here at the building around 12.30. The next one is also for the seniors. You'll have an opportunity on August the 20th to go to the Sight and Sound Theater and wait for it to see Jesus. In the way they've got it in there. So everybody that gets up here and announces that, got to do it that way. But no, you have an opportunity to do that. Uh, the show starts at 3.30. Steve says they will not stop for lunch, but will have supper after the show. Uh, if you have any questions regarding that, talk to Brother Steve. And he does need to know by end of services on Sunday the 31st. So if you want to go to either one of those, there are sign-up sheets. If you have questions regarding that, please talk to Brother Steve. Larry, thank you for a good lesson this morning. Doug, thanks for the songs. And gentlemen, your prayers were very uplifting. Thank you. have to be not online, so we encourage you to do that today if you choose to go. Also, I think that Lambert's uh, trip is, that's 12.30 a.m. they get back here. I don't know if older people, I know I don't know that time of day anymore, so. <clears throat> our final song today, after, and we'll be led our closing prayer by Ethan will be number 502. Let's stand and sing this one. Also, I think uh, they, they mentioned a ring was found a couple weeks ago. It's been up here, so if anybody's missing this ring, it's up here. Yeah. Fade, fade each earthly joy, Jesus is mine. Break every tender tie, Jesus is mine. Dark is the wilderness, earth has no resting place, Jesus alone can bless, Jesus is mine. Farewell mortality, Jesus is mine, welcome eternity, Jesus is mine. Heavenly Father, we come before you at this time as we are thankful for this day you've given us to come here and to worship you, to sing songs of praise, and to fellowship with like-minded believers. Lord, we pray that you be with us throughout this coming week. We pray that uh, what we have heard today is written on our hearts and that we can apply it to our everyday lives, um, to be light to the world and salt to the earth. Uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, you continue to convict us uh, through your word that you've left for us and that we can change ourselves and become more like Christ. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>